Hello, everyone. It's Andy. Welcome to Stacking It Up, a series of tech transformation talks that focus on the people, the technology, and the stories behind real world digital transformation. Today, we're joined by Brian McClellan. Hey, Brian. Hi, how's it going? Good, good. How are you? Great. Oh, I've never been better. <laughs> Brian, <laughs> if you didn't already know, uh, is a senior DevOps and infrastructure engineer at Mark III. Brian, can you talk, tell the, user, uh, the audience a little bit about what you do here? Sure. Uh, I work, Brian McClellan again. Hello, audience. Um, I, uh, I work on pretty much uh, everything at Mark III Systems, uh, mainly background infrastructure. So I work a lot on infrastructure components, so servers, storage, uh, switching. I do a lot of automation, multiple languages, um, and uh, domain specific languages, and I've been doing a lot with Kubernetes and container-based infrastructures here lately. So. Absolutely. For those of you guys who haven't heard it, uh, we've also recorded a prior session around that topic as well. Please feel free to check it out. But today, today's topic is all about a topic that's near and dear, I know, to your heart uh, and to many organizations that we work with, and that's all around log aggregation and log analytics. Brian, can you first start by just defining what is logger aggregation and why is it important? Sure. So I'm just going to kind of make up my own definition. So log aggregation from my standpoint is simply taking all of the logging that's done in your environment and putting it into a repository where it can be indexed and searched. So the, the analytics is, what is put on top of that once you get all of the uh, the logs into your repository and they're indexed and searchable then you want to throw some analytics on top of them so what kind of logs are we getting what are the event ids and so on and so forth so uh, log aggregation uh, is the collection and uh, the analytics is uh you know taking a look at that data making sure uh, you got some data you can put together so Makes sense. And uh, what are a handful of uh, ways that are useful reasons why somebody would want to do it? So I think log aggregation and log analytics uh, on top of it, more importantly, uh, is a key piece of the monitoring and management of the infrastructure. So uh, these, these things are um, I see that the, there's a lot of times that people, and, and you know, most people know that, right? Everybody knows that in the infrastructure, everything's logging all the time. So I think you run into a couple of challenges um, whenever it comes to log aggregation inside of, uh, you know, the enterprise. And, and, then, and then the first one is, is usually capacity, right? These logs are going to take up some space. So whether you send your logs out to a cloud, cloud-based aggregator and with analytics or you keep it on-prem, uh, you're going to need to, to, to save this data for a reasonable amount of time so that you can analyze it and it provides some value to you. Uh, the second, the second challenge with organizations and log aggregation analytics is, you know, it's logs, really. I mean, nobody looks at logs until something breaks most of the time. So it's really developing some processes in your operations teams to get those logs in front of them, right? And um, so, so I, I tend to find once you apply the analytics on top of the logs, what you see a lot of times is the development of graphs and dashboards and widgets where you can expose that data. And hopefully uh, what you want to be able to do is identify anomalies in, in, in your infrastructure via logging. So the, these are the same things that um, you'll see in monitoring infrastructure. If you look at CPU performance, for instance, if you had, um, you know, a cluster of servers that were performing the same role or a bunch of servers per, per, performing the same, the same task. Uh, if you were looking at CPU performance um, as a CPU metric in your management, uh, your, your management software, and you saw that one of these servers CPU performance was above the others, that would be a great indication that you needed to go look at that particular server. Something is not right. Okay. Well, the same applies to logging and, and, and the analytics that's put on logging. So, I mean, the same kind of idea, if you look at some of the systems logs or application logs or sys logs from switches or, or what have you, 
um, and you send those um, for servers in the same kind of task or role, you can easily identify that anomaly the same way by looking at, um, you know, an amount of uh, alerts coming out, right, an amount of certain event IDs, and so on and so forth. The benefits sound pretty amazing for organizations that get it right. Uh, but why do you think many organizations out there aren't doing it well today? Well, it's kind of like I said before, I think it's a capacity. Um, I, I, I think that the logs on the analytics side, um, getting, um, getting enough value out of the logs with analytics. What I find a lot of times with log aggregators and, and the analytics that come with them is that building um, some of the widgets or graphs can be a little bit difficult. And, and a lot of times you really don't know what you're going after whenever you start to go and then look at these logs. So a lot of the times it's kind of, you know, you have to spend a lot of time looking at the logs to understand maybe what's valuable and then build widgets and stuff afterwards. So I think number one, capacity. Number two, people don't like to look at logs. I never have. All right. Number three uh, is how do you take that log data and build a valuable visual reference out of the data? So I think that those are the most challenging parts to that. Well, it sounds like you did definitely did this well, um, especially in, on, in your previous stops before Mark III. Can you tell the viewers a little bit about maybe some of your biggest internal wins that you've had with a log aggregation strategy in the past? Sure. So, uh, you know, I've got a couple of stories. Um, you know, we had, uh, we had brought in uh, a new employee to the team and we're looking at the log ag aggregator because I I'm a big big advocate of, of leveraging them in, in daily management. So, you know, I pull up a dashboard, show a few widgets, and it was looking over an ESX cluster, right? In a, in a simple dashboard showing amount of alerts uh, per ESX host. Um, and, uh, you, you know, once the, the, the bar graph came up, you could see that there was one host that was alerting far more than than the other. So, you know, through a simple drill down and dealing with the, you know, the log aggregator and its interface, uh, we found a large amount of SCSI sense errors on a single port on one of these ESX hosts, right? Uh, what we determined and pretty quickly, I looked, I, I looked at, the, at, at the new employee and I was like, I bet you we have a bad DAC cable because I knew we were using DAC cables and they're notorious for, you know, being finicky. Uh, and, uh, you know, we went and replaced the cable and sure enough, it was a bad DAC cable. And this wasn't making itself apparent with, um, with user operations with the business. There was, really wasn't any business impact because it hasn't manifested itself in any latency at the moment. But the SCSI sense error codes that were coming out that were very apparent if you looked at the logs, uh, then, then um, you know, kind of made the case for taking a look at the physical layers. But this is a, you know, a log analytics providing proactive analysis on event logs from ESX and, and then resolving a, a problem proactively, so. Awesome. And so for uh, viewers that want to get started with log aggregation or that are somewhere down the path from a journey perspective, um, what are some of the tools and platforms that you would recommend uh, users take a look at? Sure. So, um, you know, I, I've dealt primarily with a lot of the on-prem log aggregators. Um, in my past, I've dealt with Log Insight from VMware. So that's VMware's vRealize Log Insight. Um, I think personally that it is probably one of the most easy to use log aggregator and analytics tools out there on the market. Uh, it provides content packs that are easy to import and they provide day one value, these graphs and widgets that I've been talking about, right? They immediately apply, um, they apply custom fields to logs that have been uh, been aggregated from ESX and VMware environments. And then they start to apply these little widgets with bar graphs and line graphs so that you can day one identify anomalies in your environment. And I, and I think that's pretty valuable. I think that it, it takes a lot of the time out of creating these graphs and things yourself. So I think that there's 
you know, VM, VMware vRealize login site is a great tool for on-prem. Uh, there's a couple of other really good ones in the cloud, of course. I think Datadog's getting a, a lot of, uh, a, a whole lot of uh, people behind it. You know, of course, you've got Splunk, the, the heavy hitter in the, in the world out there for log aggregation and analytics. So uh, I think that, that all of those tools are great. I personally think that um, the, the VMware vRealize Log Insight tool is a great one to get in the hands of your administrators. And most people have large VMware environments as it is today. That definitely is true. All right, well, uh, thanks for your time, Jay, Brian. Uh, real quick before we sign off, uh, can you tell the viewers uh, how they can reach you directly if they have additional questions? Sure, the best way to get a hold of me is at my blog theopscorner.com. There's an about the author link at, at the heading. Click on that and there's a bunch of contact information to get a hold of me. So you can get a hold of me at my blog and great articles, by the way. So, and that's at theopscorner.com. Awesome. Well, thanks again for joining us. See you guys next time. <laughs>